Okay, my name is Abby, and I'm going to be having a discussion with myself today about the video called Time for School, and basically it was about, um, these people followed seven kids from, like, different countries, um, through, like, so many years of their life, and they just, um, I guess measured their progression of how they were in school and everything and even though they followed seven different people they only showed four people in the video there was a girl from Afghanistan there was a boy from Brazil there was let me see I have notes hold on there was also a girl from India and a boy from Japan and the first one they talked about was the girl from As Afghanistan and her name was Shigatha or something like that. I don't know if I said that right. But, um, and you know, some of the statistics of, like, kids that go to school in Afghanistan is that one third of the kids there are not in school, and most of the kids that aren't in school are girls. So there's a big majority of girls that aren't allowed to go to school there, and that's because the Taliban that's controlling everything there wants to keep the girls out of school for some reason. They I don't know, women don't have very much equality there. And so the Taliban has done lots of violent attacks on schools there and shut like 600 schools down, I think it said. And so basically this girl is going to school and she's trying to keep up with her schoolwork, but she has a ton of house chores. So whenever she goes home, she doesn't have time to study. She just does housework because she has a large family. I th think it was like 13 kids, I don't remember. But the boys don't do housework there, it's just girls. And so she's so busy with, with housework and chores and everything that she doesn't get to keep up on her schoolwork and so it's getting hard for her. And her teachers are worried that she's like not going to be able to keep up with the pressure and she'll drop out soon because that's usually how it goes for girls there. They don't stay in school very long. Um. Then it talked about the boy Jefferson from Brazil. They started, um, like, measuring his progress when he was five, I think. And he lives, him and his family live in the slums, and his mom was unemployed for a while. But she got a job, and he started going to school, and he was really smart and everything. Um, I think, so he skipped a grade and everything, but then when... He was about, supposed to graduate fifth grade and go into middle school. They wouldn't let him graduate because they were scared that he wouldn't be able to handle middle school with all the, the big kids and the, the drug influences and stuff that would be there. They didn't think he could handle it at such a young age, so they didn't let him graduate, and that was really a, a bummer for him. He It made him really sad. He talked about how, well, yeah, he talked about how sad he was, and I don't know. I, I feel like that's kind of, uh, I would say not fair, although it is a worry that he would, like, fall in, under those pressures in middle school. I guess it's kind of hard either way to, to pick a side because there's pros and cons to both. If he goes into middle school at such a young age, like, he could be prone to going along with the bad influences and getting into drugs, maybe gangs, maybe he'd be bullied by the older kids. But being held back is probably discouraging, and so who knows if he'll have the motivation to keep going anyways. Maybe he'll drop out of school. Um, but let's see, some of the statistics said in 2003, um, Brazil started paying poor families to keep their kids in school. And that helped enrollment go up and the dropouts um, went down. But on average, the poor, the kids from poor families only stayed in school for four years. And let's see. Maybe that was about it for him. But um, for India, there was a girl named Niraj. I think that's how you say it. Um, and she... She wanted to go to school, too. She really enjoyed school, but her family run, ran a farm or something, and they had she had to herd a bunch of sheep and goats and everything, so she was busy with 
um, housework and chores all day long, and so she had to go to night school, and I think that would be hard. Um, her parents weren't super supportive of it because they don't like girls to go to school there as well. Her mom said something like, we, we had our boys edu educated and that was pointless because what are they doing with it now? And so she thought it was pointless for her daughter to become educated too. So when I think they sent her off somewhere to herd their sheep for a long time. And so she had to quit night school and when she came back, she was really behind in the studies and everything and they shut the night school down because there weren't enough people because most of the other kids that were in the night school started day school and so her parents let her start day school but since she was so behind she was in class with like second graders I think and even though she was so old and so she got teased and bullied and people made fun of her for being there even though she was so old and so she dropped out of that and that was basically the end for her she wasn't super motivated to do it anymore which is sad to me because all these people that want to be educated have so much going against them and they end up quitting but yeah she was just looking forward to marriage after that because I guess women there get married at a young age so um and then there was Ken from Japan and this was a super different perspective than the other ones I feel like because in the other ones the children like they realized that education was key and they they like hungered after education they wanted to go to school they wanted to learn as much as they could they had really high aspirations but then this um, little boy in Japan like school is so strict and I don't know pressured there like they're pressured to be super good be really smart there's so many hours of school that they go to and everything and like the kids aren't super motivated anymore and um, even though like secondary school enrollment is almost at a hundred percent when the worldwide average is under sixty percent it's almost at a hundred percent there and it's like very demanding and successful schooling but they aren't like they take it for granted because like they have so much to offer there and the mother of Ken was saying how um, she doesn't think that they realize how much of a like a privilege and a blessing it is for them to have so much like right at their fingertips that they're they're just losing you know losing motivation I can't think of another word but yeah but in the other places there was like so much pressure for dropout of school like so much going against them whether it's their family the culture um, I don't know, I think here we, we also take it for granted. We don't realize how big of a blessing education is, that we can go if we want, yet some people don't want to, so they don't have to. I don't know. It's, it was a really interesting video. It brought up a lot of good points and opened my eyes to the different cultures and how they they deal with education and I, I think education is really important it it puts like a desire into the kids it gives them something to live for to work towards instead of just well I was gonna say instead of just like working on a farm for the rest of their life which isn't bad because that's what their families do that's what their culture does so they've got to learn to do that as well but like all the all the little kids were like, oh, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. I want to go to school so I can be a teacher or a doctor. And that was just so inspiring to me that they, even though they had so little, they wanted to. They wanted to learn so that they could make a difference in other people's lives as well. And I don't know, that's a cool video. This this video that I'm making isn't as awkward as I thought it would be talking to myself, but. I hope it made sense, so yes, that is all. Goodbye. <laughs>